Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Uh, this is the movie show. There are so many movies these days where uh, George Kaysen and I, we examine them. It's a flood of movies. This is a time where we have more movies available to us right at home. And it's a time when we have to evaluate them and learn from them. Okay? Some of them are more learning experiences than others. And today is a sort of geographical learning experience. It's also an experience in love. We're going to review Berlin, I Love You. This is part of a, a, a city series uh, of cities you could love. Um, let's see, there was Je Tame, Paris, Je Tame. There was New York, I Love You. And there was Rio, I Love You, all made within the last couple of years. Um, this one, Berlin, I Love You, is uh, 2019. And uh, as all the other movies, there are many stories involved, all stories of love and sometimes tragedy um, done by different directors. And we see um, various angles, various events and, and um, situations that take place in these cities. So Berlin, I Love You is somehow it's different than the others. Um, so George, uh, let's start out with saying, why is it different? What is special about Berlin, I Love You? Well, there are 10 vignettes showing different, different aspects of life in Berlin current day Berlin, which is a re reunited Berlin, uh, because it was once separated between East Germany and West Germany. Um, and each of these vignettes is dealing with a different aspect of people living in Berlin, many of them who have come emigrated to, to Berlin to find themselves or to, to start a new chapter in their life, right? And that's basically what this is all about. Um, it's uh, it's not like some things like like the Woody Allen movie where there was comedy, which was vignettes in in Rome. This is all pretty serious stuff. There's no comedy here, but it's it, it's a varied varied existence because you have people that are being depicted that have come from the United States, from other parts of Europe, from the Middle East, and each of those ten shows some aspect of current day Berlin as Berlin is today. And I, you know, I just know from personal experience that Europe has changed and it's become very Middle Easternized as well. So there's, there's different aspects. There's, there's two or three of these vignettes that are dealing with people from the Middle East and then other parts of Europe, United States. So that's pretty much it. Not to repeat myself, but that's that's the basics. Okay, well let's 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 uh, unpack that a little bit. Yeah, I, I think you've hit it in in terms of trying to find the difference between uh, this version of the I Love You series, uh, cities I love, uh, and the others because uh, this is um, this is people from outside of Berlin coming to Berlin. It's not that many Berliners. It's an examination of what they find and how they react to it and how they are able to, um, you know, live their lives in it, uh, even though they may not be all that familiar with it. Now, I went and looked at the reviews of this movie okay, on the Internet, and I found, as with the others, virtually thousands of reviews. So just to, you know, summarize that to, um, you know, distill a, a little bit, uh, a lot of them criticized the movie because there weren't a lot of Germans in the movie and they weren't speaking German. Uh, it's not like this is a movie in German where, you know, it was uh, dubbed or translated into English. I mean, the titles are English, um, but if you want titles, but the movie is English. And, and, that, and they criticized that because they said, well, you know, if you, if you love Berlin, then don't you have to be a Berliner? And the other, the other uh, point that I think was running right through all these criticisms was um, that Berlin isn't really like this. This is Berlin through the eyes of people who really don't know Berlin. This, uh, this all takes place within a, um, a relatively small area of Berlin. And uh, there were Berliners that said, I live in that area. That's not what it's like. This is not what Berlin is like. Uh, you think, you know, you're learning something about Berlin? No, you're learning about people who visit Berlin and, and what their experience is in Berlin between the two of them or however many there are. But, you know, we have to remember that there, there are different segments, as you said, and they have different directors and completely different stories. Some of them are truly love stories. Others are stories of tragedy. 
Others are stories of um, learning hard lessons. Um, and so, you know, what is appealing to me about this movie is not so much, um, you know, that it's uh, about Berlin, but it's a series of very good short movies, really well done, high values, uh, very high quality uh, actors. Um, and that's what makes it interesting. What, what did you find about it, George? I agree with you that that the story, each of the individual stories are pretty good and the actors and actresses are doing a good job as well. Uh, and I, d definitely what you were saying, these are not all love stories. Some of them are serious issues, you know, um, that are, people are dealing with in Berlin. So when it says Berlin, I love you, I think it means more that, you know, people come to Berlin because it sort of resurrected itself from, from when it was split. And it's a, sort of a new city and people who want to resurrect themselves come to Berlin, you know, it's, it's to start a new, be, new beginnings in Berlin, you know, from various places. So I totally agree with you. Yeah, that, that's, that's the gist of it, that there's, it's not all love stories. And, and that, that sort of takes away when you have Berlin, I love you, and then I love you for what to come to like that. It's more like I love you in Berlin rather than I love you Berlin. Like the, <laughs> the first one with the, the, the speaking car, Vanessa, he came to Berlin to drink himself to death because his fiance, his girlfriend fell in love with his brother and, 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 and he's miserable. So he's going to drink himself to death. And then luckily he finds a Charlotte Le Bon who, uh, beautiful actress, you know, and he finds a new love, you know, in, 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 in Berlin. So sort of resurrect and, and the car, Vanessa, the car pretty much gets him right on the back track. So he doesn't commit suicide from alcohol, but that's only one of the 10, but we can get into some of these others if you wish, you know, I, I, oh, I absolutely do. Um, and by list. the way, there's some really terrific actors here. Um, there's Mickey O'Rourke. Uh, which is oh, yeah, yeah. fabulous, and uh, Helen Mirren is in there. Although yes. one piece of criticism said Helen Helen Mirren she, she played Queen Elizabeth. Now this, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that that's the mark of a good actor or a, a, actress is that you can play different different roles, and you don't get a pin, pigeonholed into a certain kind of a role, and then you have the flexibility. That that's the mark of a super performer, you know, they can take, yeah. they can take on any role, but you know, I can, yeah, and you can get to see them doing their thing. So I think one thing very interesting about this and the other uh, movies in the series is that you're, you're titillated with new stories every few minutes. And you, you know, you make an almost an unconscious comparison between this story and the other story and they're coming at you so fast. Um, and you, you know, you begin to, uh, you know, be critical of, uh, of, you know, how well they work together. And actually, uh, as I recall, in the end of this movie, it, it all comes together, and you and you see these various characters, um, you know, actually on the same on the same screen, even though they're from different segments of the movie. So, George, uh, let's talk about the segments. You were going to yeah. uh, set some of them up. What what segments do you like? Well, I think I already mentioned the, the one with Vanessa, you know, the, the talking car and and then the one with Helen Mir, you know, uh, Mirren. It's like a little Arab kid. His her daughter has come to from London or from England to uh, Berlin and she's working in this agency where it takes care of, uh, you know, refugees. And there's this little Arab kid whose brother is in the hospital with some infection. Right. And they've come, they're probably living in a refugee camp. So she, she brings the little boy home because he can't stay at the facility, you know, because the mother, his mother's with the kid in, in, in the hospital. So he, she brings the kid home and then Helen Mirren's playing her mother who doesn't really approve of this and says to her daughter, what are you doing? Br bringing your, the, these problems home? And then, and then the interaction between mother and daughter. And Helen Mirren plays a really good role. I think like Kira Knightley or whatever, who's playing the, uh, the, the, the daughter. They play the, the, the role pretty much. But I'll go through them quickly, and then you can allude to which one you, you're, you're interested in. Um, uh, then Mickey, Mickey Rourke, right? That's a real, you know, you're really not sure, but it, it, I'm pretty sure that what they're trying to say is that the, the woman he's trying to pick up in the bar, in the hotel bar, it was about, 
a little old, 25 years younger than him. And he, she's beautiful, beautiful woman. And then, and then he brings her home. He wants to make love to her, right? And then she's not really sure about this after, you know, they've communicated. And that turns out to be his long lost daughter, you know, which is a shocker. And then he's crying because he sort of abandoned his daughter. And this is his daughter, you know, that, that that's what I think they're trying to say there. And then, um, I mean, before you move on, I mean, Mickey Rourke is really something. Amazing. I mean, back when he was kind of a leading man, he was very tough and hard. Um, he had a, a Kim Basinger. He had a movie called Eight and a Half, which was absolutely knockout way back when. But it's been a long time, and, and his personal life has been up and down. And he doesn't look so good. Uh, and in this movie, he's uh, you know looks like he's in his seventies, and he's he's got long. Uh, tresses of blonde hair go figure that and he looks old and when they have the bedroom scene you can see all the tattoos on him he's he's really been around mickey rook uh, very very interesting character he plays and uh, it works well on him because it is him um the other the other thing is these these uh, segments are filled with really good one-liners i remember he's um you know he's sitting at the bar with this beautiful blonde who is half his age and um, uh, he says, uh, uh, what are my chances? And everybody knows what that means. <laughs> and the answer is half, half, it's half, half. Well, there's two possibilities, yes and no. So it's half, that's half. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right, you know, it's either yes or no, right? <laughs> Not a good, see, all, all, yeah, all those tat tatting, you know, tat tattoos, that's, you know, sort of, they could have found an actor who's more suave, even though Mickey's getting a little old, you know. Yeah. There. So that's that's what we can get. That, was, that was really a knockout to find that she was his daughter, and, yeah. and uh, he he had almost uh, had sex with her, almost. Yeah. But he but he uh, he he pulled away at the last minute, and so you're so relieved yeah, that he that, didn't he didn't have incestual sex unknowingly true. with this with this woman. I mean, exactly. it's, it, the other way, it would have it left a stain on the movie somehow. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's an incestual, like you said, incestual relationship. Let me go through these and then you can pick the ones. Then there's a then there's a laundromat scene with this guy who comes into the laundromat and he's sort of a male chauvinist. And, and then there's a party, you know, that plays in uh, uh, some woman comes in and she says that her Brazilian Colombian friend or Brazilian friend is going to have a party there. Nobody sees it's a laundromat, but then that's what happens. And then and then then there's a a, a Turkish cab driver uh, from Turkey, and there's this American spy or or you know CIA F CIA agent, and then he, they show him, and then and then there's this Arab fu fugitive that's stabbed some some kids who are tormenting his family, and and. Uh, and he's in. He goes into a brothel, you know, to try to hide. And then the, the prostitute wants to have sex with him, and he says, "No sex, no sex." And then, uh, and then, <laughs> then, then there's a, one of the producers. Uh, she's a Diana Agron. She's she's playing a, a puppeteer, and she meets this American guy there, and they have a little back and forth. And you know, he's trying to pick her up. Oh, and, that's a great line. That's a great line. He said, uh, "This they're at a fountain somewhere in Berlin." Yeah. She's really pretty, yeah, um, right. and he's a you know, middle class guy who you can tell he's well educated, and uh, he's trying to pick her up. So he says, "See, I've been sitting here wondering if I could ask you out to lunch." That's his opening line. Exactly. And, and she and she responds with the greatest, biggest smile you ever saw, which is an answer to his question. It's a very touching scene. A very wholesome looking, beautiful woman. Uh, let me get this. Then there's a G German street street mime, you know, with this uh, Israeli song singer, right? She's there singing on the streets. He's, I mean, there are a lot of attractive German men. This guy was god awful, ugly, and she's really beautiful. She's a beautiful Israeli woman. So I, I don't know how they match those two up. And they fall in love at the end. I don't know how she fell in love. He's, he's not really. I mean, they're attractive German men. He's, he wasn't attractive at all. And then, and then there's this other, I think, American woman, and she's uh, she's carrying her. She's obviously come. She's got her bag. She's come from the United States or wherever. And then she she meets up with this uh, singer, this 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 uh, guy who's in a band, and they sort of fall in love. And then the last one is 
a drag queen and a teenage kid. I mean, there's an interaction between them, and that that's that plays in. So there's a very the interesting moment in that one where yeah. he says, uh, <clears throat> "Have you ever have you ever kissed a man?" Exactly. And um, and they wind up this 17 year old kid sitting by you know this famous water waterfront at early morning because they've been up all night, um, where they agree there will be one kiss yeah. between these two men. The, trans, the transvestite and the high school kid. Right. And you have this moment of, uh, it's like the Sistine Chapel. It's not likely to repeat. It won't repeat with them. Not likely to repeat, but it's it's um, a kind of a negotiated kiss. So the kid can, can see what it feels like. And he's kind of blown away by the experience um, just to have tried it. It's a really wonderful piece. Yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, you know, uh, one of the interesting, they're all interesting. This is an interesting one too. Okay, now, do you want, do you want to emphasize? Well, I, I, one that comes to mind, I didn't want to interrupt you, but the one sure. comes to mind that really uh, shook me was the Turkish cab driver. Yeah. She was really a terrific character. Yeah, um, comes from Turkey, uh, comes to, to Berlin, drives a cab, and she's really smart. And she's really Akamai Scudder. She's got her feet on the ground and all this. And this guy hops in the back of the cab um, and she talks to him because she chats people up. That's what she does. Mm -hmm. And he is very shy and he, he, is, he doesn't really want to talk to her. But little by little, over the course of the cab ride, you know, he opens up a little bit. And uh, she's, uh, she's uh, taking him to an embassy. I don't remember what embassy it was in Berlin. It was a foreign country That's embassy. Latin was it? American, some Latin American, Mer Latin American country. country. And he's got this, uh, he's clutching this um, briefcase while he's in the cab. And he looks like he's scared, you know, he looks very nervous. And he hops out. They've had, uh, you know, a few minutes of conversation with them. But it's the kind of thing that that happens maybe in the movies. And in my experience in Europe, you know, you can get to know somebody really well, just in a few minutes, you can, you can connect. Um, and they did. They connected in the cab. And then he hopped out. And as the plot goes, he was actually stealing top secret papers from one country to give them to another country. And the, the end is the end is not good. The end is not good. So what you have in terms of you're looking for a love connection is this few minutes in the taxi cab. And after that, he blows his life up. <laughs> She's an aspiring reporter, and she's driving a cab to to make a buck, you know, to make a living, while yeah. she's aspiring to be a a um, a reporter. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't quite catch that 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 thing that you caught that this that he's going to be. I thought he was just an American CIA agent. So no, he was that. he was del he was uh, delivering papers. He was um, doing espionage. That, that made it so interesting. <laughs> no wonder he was so scared and he was you bet. Scared, didn't want to say anything. Okay, um, which other one are you? Uh, what about the, the one where the lady ultimately gets to sing in the amphitheater in the park? Do you remember that one? Uh, oh, the Israeli woman, right? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Yeah. She. she She's it's, it starts with her. You've got the German mime with angel wings on a street corner in Berlin, a, a key street corner in Berlin. And she decides that she's going to come stand 20 feet away from him. And she's going to sing because that's a key thing. And, and as she starts singing, he's a grump, you know, he turns to her and says, Oh, please stop it, you know, and she says, No, you know, this there's enough, there's enough people coming by here that we can both be here, right. And he's sort of holding her uh, uh, away, you know, and, and uh, then she and then they little by little, they get to know each other, then he goes into this uh, Russian uh, owned uh, um, shop, and he wants to buy something. And she walks in and she's willing to pay for him, right. And then he says that she's he's taking away from her, her, his pride, because he doesn't have enough money to 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 buy whatever it was, and and she she pays for him. But then they get to, and he lets her stay at his at his place because she just showed up a day or two before, has no place to stay, you know, not a hostel or anything. 
And then after one night, he tells her to leave, you know, doesn't want her to stay. And she, she wants to stay because, she, you know, it's a comfortable place. But they don't really explain this mom with no money, how he can living in this really beautiful apartment. You know, he's obviously got money, you know, to pay for the apartment. Or he's apartment. actually secretly wealthy, as I recall from he's secretly wealthy. He owns the building. And, and so um, it, it's hard to understand exactly why he threw her out. Maybe he was threatened by her in some way. And you're right. He was really not a good looking person. No. He, he, very, very sc scraggly individual. And they were un an unlikely combination. But, you know, at the moment where she finds herself and sings to a, a, a quite a, an audience there in the amphitheater in the park, he shows up. It was not clear whether he was going to show up. He shows up, and so you see, um, they they they've connected. You know, again, like some of the other ones, um, they've connected, and and that's you know that's love, I suppose. You can have a very short term love too, and you you knew this wasn't going to last very long. And and I think it's also an interesting piece that she's Israeli, knocking around in Berlin where the Germans are, uh, where the Nazis were. Um, and she's, um, you know, she's she's bringing her her legacy to him. Um, and there's, there's always a second, you know, a second dimension to that. There have been many other movies like that where Israelis have found solace among modern day uh, Germans. And, and that takes me to something I wanted to mention to you, George. You know, one of the movies that we're going to look at in the pipeline in a, in a few weeks um, it is called The Billion Dollar Code. And uh, I was just fascinated with this movie. It was, um, it, the heroes in the movie were uh, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of people who established something called Terrorvision um, back in the, um, I wanna say the, um, the 90s, early 90s, when, when the internet had not yet really been born. And they did that in, in Germany and I think in Berlin. And, and uh, so you got to know them pretty well. It's a true story, by the way. You got to know them pretty well. And you got to see Germany in the 90s. And uh, after that, you got, to, you got to meet Germans who were, you know, they were artists and computer people, but mostly artists. Um, and you got to see what their life was like there. You got to see how much time they spent in Lottie Linea land, you know, with the nightclubs and, the, and the, the, the strobe lights and the blaring music and all that. And you got to look, you got to look through the keyhole of modern day Germany, post-war Germany. Um, and it was, you know, kind of raunchy in many ways. Although the, the individuals involved, uh, and I'm sure they're like this in real, in real life, the ones who have survived a long time ago already, um, were, um, they were kindly. Uh, they, uh, they were hardworking, of course. They were, um, they were uh, worth knowing. They were, you know, they were people with character. And um, you, you get a little, a little keyhole in that movie into life in Germany. And you didn't get that in this movie, Berlin, I Love You. You didn't get that. You never really met people like the ones who um, developed that software in the 90s in Berlin. Uh, and I think it was probably missing that. Because all these, um, it's like skipping rocks off a pond, you know? These, these segments kept skipping off the pond, but they didn't really get down deep into the environment. Uh, each one is a, a valuable story by a valuable uh, cast and a valuable director, but um, you know, I don't. I don't feel that you got to know a lot about the German character, and I would have liked to see more of that. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is the music. You know, if you go to the reviews, you know, the thousands of reviews of this of this um, movie, uh, you will also see a strain, a, a substantial number of comments about this seductive music that is playing throughout the movie. I did not notice it when I watched the movie, but the reviews are, are very clear. They, a lot of people thought this music was you know, a, an important part, if not the best part of the movie. It was, it was hypnotic somehow for them. Do you remember the music? Yeah, I've, I've been, it's been go going in my mind recently, you know, since I've been watching the twice I watched this uh, Berlin I Love You, and that, that music keeps playing in my ear. So it's very seductive music. Yeah. I, yeah, that that's, you know, totally seductive to me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, one thing I wanted to add about the scene with the, the Israeli woman, if you, if I may, if you, I mean, they took, she goes to a building where her grandparents had lived 
And in the street, they have the names of her grandparents, right? And, and, and who lived there. And then she tells the German guy that her grandmother survived, you know? And then he says to her, uh, you know, isn't it upsetting for you to be here? And she said, you know, no, I, it, it, you know, that she's come to ter terms to what happened with her, you know, her grandparents and stuff. So that's, that was an interesting part of it too, you know, uh, other than the, the un, as you said, the relationship between, she's really beautiful and he's sort of really god awful ugly. So, but that, that, that's a, that's a key point of that one. So I'll leave it at that. Well, you know, it goes back to uh, the fact that Germany has changed. And whether they investigated that in this series of uh, segments or not, Germany is different now. And um, it's, it's, not, it's not, you know, pre-war or during the war, post-war Germany. It's, um, it's very, very vital, invigorated. Um, they, it's a different, completely different kind of personality. Of course, there are minority groups that are fascist, but uh, most people are, you know, worth knowing. And so uh, I think she, part of the reason she gets by that is because she is, uh, observes uh, that Germany is different, including this guy who in, an, in another time might have been pretty threatening, but not, not in the movie. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I, th I, I saw it as a roller coaster, George. And one thing I wanted to mention to you is if you want to enjoy this movie, you have to watch it carefully because there's, so, there's all new plots, all new you know, drill down points, finesse points that if you don't catch it, you won't really understand that segment and you won't understand what they're trying to tell you uh, about the love condition of people who visit uh, and connect or try to connect with Germany and, and uh, Berlin. Um, so, it, you know, it's not the sort of thing where, you, you know, you can, you can just watch it casually. You have, to, you have to focus on it. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 as you said, it changes so quickly from one to the other that you sort of by the time you started to assimilate what happened they're on to another segment so it doesn't you can't really too a little too quick i have issues with that that there was if they had done like five vignettes given a little more time i would have liked this more it was too much too many changes too quick to try to really understand each individual one as you said yeah well, I mean, it goes to my point about you have to watch it because the, the vignettes move very quickly. Um, but each one is its own story. Each one is compelling. Each one is memorable in its own way. I, I, I would have trouble making a choice among all of them because they were all good. They were all world-class stories. And this movie won awards, by the way. Um, and, and so I'm thinking that, you know, it's about storytelling. It's about taking a rather complex story that stands by itself and somehow putting that into, uh, you know, eight or 10 minutes, uh, whatever, whatever it is, um, and making you understand the story or at least giving you enough material so that you can and giving you an in-depth story. And, and the, the lesson there is you don't need 90 minutes to tell a story in a movie. You can tell a story in 10 minutes and have you know pretty powerful impact if you do it right if you do it with it and that's the challenge to these various directors and actors you know that their job is to give you a complex valuable story in 10 minutes uh and it's doable absolutely doable this movie as the other movies in the series absolutely proves that then um, you know as filmmakers or would-be filmmakers we should all know that you can you can really have an effect on somebody in a 10 minute film. Huh? So, okay, what, um, what, what do you think about, um, you know, going forward with this? Would you watch another one of these I Love You movies? Would you, would you watch uh, the New York I Love You or the Paris I Love You? Uh, there's another one was Rio I Love You. Those are the ones I think are in the series. Or is Berlin I Love You enough? Well, the thing is, I, had, I have issues with, this this Berlin, I love you because of the too many too many as I said too many different vignettes. Uh, so I would have to see some of the others be, to to get a better picture because all different directors, all different producers, you know, uh, each each one of these. So um, I'd I'd have to look at the others to to really give it a, a good assessment. I mean, 
even I have. Yeah, well, you can you can certainly uh, look at the, uh, you know, the um, uh, the trailers for all of them. They're all on the internet. Get a handle on it, and they'll tell you what the awards were. I think pretty much all of the ones I mentioned have won awards of one kind or another. I mean, they're all excellent films, uh, although uh, some people disagree with some of the premises involved. So what would you give this film, you know, looking back on it here today, George? Would you give it a five? Would you give it a zero? A three. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I'm, I wasn't really happy with the, um, you know, I mean, get, compared to some of the other movies we've looked at, which I was really excited about, like, like the one on Rome, you know, Woody Allen's movie was phenomenal. I love that movie, right? This has sort of left me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd have to look at, as you said, the other, some of the other I Love You series just to get a better, it, I mean, there was good parts of this, right? But um, I'm not really excited. You may feel differently than I do. I, I do. Uh, I, I felt emotionally uh, uplifted by it. Uh, maybe it was just the notion of these various vignettes of love. I like movies like that. Um, and I like to see it in many forms, uh, and I like the actors. So I would give it a four. I would not give it a five, but I would give it a four. Uh, let me ask you also, George, uh, we're almost out of time. What's, what's in the pipeline? What do you recall we are looking at now and which we are going to report on in, you know, in the near term? Okay, the next one is, it, it's about that British uh, woman who uh, didn't follow the, 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 the restrictions operation you, I'd have to look again before I to see the movie. The, the official secrets about, movie. Yeah, the official secrets, and then the next one is the one you mentioned about. Uh, okay. The billion dollar code. Billion dollar code. Those are the two, two next. But as as I as yeah, as I sent to you, I, I have some other suggestions down the line. Things that are, you know, whatever is fine you find to be important. You know, I have some other ish things I'd like to really get into. You know, so. Um, but those are the next two. Yeah. Okay. George uh, Kaysen, uh, a Renaissance man, a man for all seasons, and a man for all movies. Thank you so much, George. I look forward to our next discussion. Aloha.